Look at it. I guess you know more about the hand painting. Look at it. It's like, it's like you've gone to heaven or something, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm Did Jerry tell you that I interviewed the guy who painted that? Yes. He's still alive. He the 90 year old. 90 year old. That is fantastic. Yeah. Mario Rueda is his name. I think he's a great guy. Yeah, he's in the book. I think I read some. He's in the book. I was about 19 when, or 18 when this went up. And um, I loved all the Beatles stuff anyway. And the fact that Paul's rumor that he was possibly an impersonator, right, uh, uh, that he had died or something, and everyone knew it wasn't true, but, you know, we thought it was funny. So this billboard went up. I was going to be turning 19 in a few days after it had gone up. So I uh, asked a few friends if they could help me. Uh, I thought it would be funny if we cut his head off, and that's... You know, that's really where it started. My buddies lived right in that neighborhood. We lived right up in Laurel Canyon off on Woodrow Wilson. And uh, so, yeah, if you want me to, I could tell you about like how it's like, I got like five or six of my best friends and uh, we all, I asked them to meet me there. We were gonna have this big elaborate plan of um, we're tipping hats, you know, because hippies, you know, you could wear hats. We didn't really wear, I didn't wear a hat, but we, we, we brought our hats and we would tip our hats from different corners if they saw the sheriff coming from any direction, right? And um, seemed like a great plan. While they were letting it, watching guard, we were going to climb up in the back and cut it off. Uh, that was a little probably too early in the night. It was around 10.30, you know, like prime time on the strip. But, so uh, we went, what happened? Oh, so then, sure enough, the sheriff pulls up, had been watching us do all this stupid stuff. We hadn't started climbing yet. So they got us all together, about six of us on the corner. Of, I think it's very close to La City, the cleaners. And uh, they gather us up. So what are you guys doing? What are you tipping off? What are you signaling what's going on? Nothing, we're just hanging out, messing around, you know, and I guess you could get away with a lot of stuff in those days if you weren't really too bad. You know, you weren't real juvenile delinquents, right? So we, uh, they dispersed us, right? And um, my car was in that lot right below the, I had a 59 Volvo, it was my first car, with the round, it looked like a 44 or something, and it, uh, it was waiting for the deed underneath the billboard and the cop the sheriffs told us to go home and I went down to one of my buddies houses right there the two two guys that came back with me lived right on like Hilldale and one of them was I forgot but they um so we regrouped just the three the other ones kind of just wanted to go home they didn't want to deal with it or get busted or something so we uh Let's go back a lot later. So we went back about two in the morning, parked right in the same place. And two o'clock was kind of when things were closing, so you'd see the cars, you know, you know the strip. So it was back and forth, and then it started dying down finally. But we thought it'd be quieter then. And anyway, my the the buddy Joey lived right on uh, Hilldale, and his dad was a um, cabinet maker. And had a shop in his garage and all this stuff. So he, he, the kid knew how to use tools. You know, my other buddy was going to be just the accomplice. He, had, he was one of the first kids to have his own place right there. So that's where we hang out most of the time. So we'd, uh, let me see, Joey brought his skill saw, dad's skill saw, a long extension cord, and one of those screw in, because we had checked the, Case the joint, of course, right? So there was, there was what do you call it? Bare bulb lights on the back, on the side of the cleaners there, which is right behind the billboard. And so we knew we could unscrew that, screw in a socket that would have a plug-like thing, and that's and we just threw it up there from behind, climbed up the back. You know, it wasn't a very top. That billboard was only started about six feet off the ground. It was an older wooden structure. I think it had the little catwalk in the front, but in the back it was all like climbing the backside of a fence. It was real easy. And so one guy, I guess Dennis stayed down on the ground. I climbed up with Joey, 
and kind of held it because if you try to cut something with the weight of, as you hit the end, it'll snap or you might kill yourself with the saw or something. So anyway, I kind of took the weight off as he was cutting. Then we handed it down, threw it in the back of my 59 Volvo and went home. <laughs> and I think I took, probably took it straight to my house. Uh, the three of us for a, for a few years sort of took turns having it in our pad, you know. But what did your parents say? I mean, you show up with <laughs> Paul McCartney's the, head. My dad and mom were very cool, I think. They were, they were, they were straight, right? And we had just moved out five or ten years earlier from the Midwest, but they, uh, they were into the film business, like, real quick. They got involved with a, a lot of great, great people and great stories on that whole subject, too. But the, Did they feel like you were stealing? Did anyone say you stole that, or you, that's your vandalism? Did anybody ever attach a negative? No, there no. was never a negative kind of thing, and it was kind of... I mean, it was just like a cool thing to do, you know, except I didn't want anyone to find out that we did it. I, I was afraid we'd get in trouble if wrong people heard. Yeah, I don't know. But but did you brag to your friends at school? We, you know, weren't you... Weren't oh, you yeah, everyone them? knew about it. Everyone knew about it. At Fairfax, at Hollywood Eye, where... Well, actually, I would... Yeah, I was just... I hadn't graduated yet. I was in my senior year, actually, because it was December of 69, we, so anyway, uh, yeah, everyone knew about it. In fact, I think I was still up at my folks' house on Woodrow Wilson, so this hung on the wall in their den. It was kind of like in here. I hung it up, on, and they loved it, because they had photos and movie star people that they photographed, black and white thing, you know, a lot of stuff on the walls, you know, so this just kind of... Headshots, fit. and you had... Yeah, right, I had a headshot. <laughs> I brought my right. <laughs> and did you invite friends over to see it? See oh, it? yeah, everyone saw it, and... And plus, when it would go to Joey's house for a few months, you know, it would be there for a while, you'd look. But that was at his mom and dad's house, too, so it wasn't quite the hangout. My, my folks was, were very open to a lot, of, a lot of people, and kids were up there all the time. And then uh, Dennis had his own place, so you'd see it there when you'd hang out with your buddies and girls and stuff. And, what was the first press? When did, when did the, the TV well, this, pick up on it right away? I mean... How soon after you did it did you start hearing about it? In well, the there's this, I say, like, a few, less than a week or so later, it says January 70. So a few, like, we can take it out later if you want, but... Tell us what you're holding. This is one of those free newspapers that you would get on the strip. You'd open the thing, free news, you know, like a free press. And I never even really remember the image. But it was one of them, and we're walking down the strip again, like we always do, and there it is. Like, you know, oh wow, look at that! It's uh, the image, some insight about John Mayall playing and stuff, and living in Laurel Canyon, and and then the billboard with the cut head, the head cut off. I don't know if that's your photo or something no. else. Was there an article? Did they? No say article. Not a word. Not a word. You open it up. There's no. It's just the picture of on the cover. And it was free, you know? And I grabbed it, and thank God I still have it, you know? Because there's so many things that I don't have anymore.